point. I would draw one side so I can reset the balance. You know, feel it in the download dock. All right. Now, there's a really deep rotation of our hip joints. I don't suggest you do this sequence unless you've been initiated or you've done this yourself. All right. Let's start with yeah, the Badrasana or the gracious position yeah, or the Mulabandasana. Some school we call it this way. After a back bend and you rotate the thigh bone externally, externally, this becomes really, I say, tricky for the hips. So this will require us to really draw the sensation from the core. And you may sit first on the buttocks so you can assess the knees. And when you're ready, flipping through those ankle joints and hip joints. You can do it one arm at a time. Yeah, so you can assess your way forward. Yeah, you might hear pops and clicks. The badrasana. And then you might move a bit of a side to side like this, lifting up the back bend. You may lightly reach to the back. Sometimes I would do like arm binding behind. Yeah. In here, the spine is open yeah, after the back bend. Therefore, there's now clogging the hips. But this will only happen once yeah, your bandhas are able to support you. And the tongue too. I use my tongue a lot. Okay. Now we roll up your shoulders around and then do one round of the Badrasana with yeah. an eye exercise. All right. Free arms. Yeah, use them to support your way forward. Forward, keep the chest up. See, you don't want to be yeah, collapsing your chest. Yeah. So you're not compromising the discs of your little spine. All right, you can just untangle or pressing into the back. You do a downward dog. All right, alternating three-legged dog again. I would do that, but rasana twice. Huh? The first one is always the heavy one, and the next one is the lighter one. All right, body forward. Body down. Body up. And to the back. All right, Vadrasana number two. The second side is generally lighter. You can rub the hips there a few times. All right. Just get this one out of the way. All right. Also this. Through. Chest opens. And you can flip simultaneously. Be careful, okay? Still one hand catching you up, you forward. You can adjust. So if you notice I wave a lot, because through those coiling and twisting and spiraling inside the joints, you're able to free your body. Yeah, so our bodies are not perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, it likes to coil inside, like knobs. Yeah. Right, I'll do a hand, Anjali to the back. For a moment, I'll try to weigh down on my feet. And if it's there, I will lift the head up. And then do an eye exercise. The Murcha Pranayama. All right. Head, arms, lift. All right. Support. And then flowing down and crossing. Yeah, like the frog 
you might lie down there, yeah, and reset by circling around those joints and a bit of the side to side too. And swimming your legs, crisscrossing them. Beautiful. All right, so this is the first round of my hip opener. Good. And the next one is a combination of hip opener and a back bend. And then crossing through. Yeah. It's a Supta Brajrasana, this one. Well, again, this is an advanced position. Don't do it. Maybe just for inspiration, unless you know, you've done this before. So you do your Bada Padmasana first. But from the Padafad Masana, we're gonna lie back, yeah, reclining. All right, and the head there falls, you might adjust the hips there, and sometimes they would lose my side there, so I can yeah, glide my elbows across even, will lift. And I will rub the hip in the shoulders. If you lose it, it's all right. All right. Maybe lift the head. <laughs> and wiggle a bit there. All right. And once there, let it rest. All right. And here, you want to pull the core in, really pull the core in so the chest can open. And if you feel the neck, because as you hold it, the neck will open. You may want to try to fold the head side to side so you can open the desk and then rub your elbows further under. Good. If you have done this before and you have another, maybe a partner, a yoga partner, you can do the rocking up and down. Yeah. But if you're alone, uh, it's also possible with your head lightly touching the ground. All right. And to come up, all right, you can uncross there. All right. And then press the elbow and then let the head relax. Right? And for a moment, I will just circle around my head down before I uncross the legs. And then I would rock up and down. Yeah. And reset the body by doing side to side. Right. And if you like doing another round of side stretch, why not? Yeah. Because after a back bend, then after a deep hip opener, the side body tends to contract. And by doing deep lateral extension, yeah, you allow those discs to open once more. Beautiful. All right, rising up and down, and I will keep it low. Right. And I'll do Supta Kandasana. Again, this is just me. Yeah, I've developed this sequence through years. It doesn't mean yeah, that you have to do it too. Yeah. And work the other side. Beautiful. All right. Collecting the legs. Yeah. And then gently up and down. And a bit of circles and a bit of swinging. Do rearrange those joints back to their neutral position. Yeah? And then some inner thigh stretching too. All right. Your low back may be feeling a bit tense already. Yeah. You can just sit. You know, I will try and work the core. Yep. And then to the front. I'll match the legs. And I'll flow there. And to the back. All right. The reclining cross legs again. This time it's the other leg crossing on top. Oh, it's the same leg. That's it. 
Ah, no, it's the right leg. <laughs> All right, and just moving side to side. All right, nurse the breath in, huh? Sometimes I would roll my shoulders under already in the elbows. And that one falls first, so I can rub just over that arm. And that finds my center already. That opens, breathe through it, and stop in. Oh, it feels good, this one. All right. Opening the heart. So this is another type of back pain, but this one targets the thoracic, the chest region, the heart space. Notice how the chest is open. All right. Entangle, you have free one arm at a time. Keep the head pressing. Use the elbow still. Release the rest of your spine. You can hug. Circle around. All right. And crossing. Yeah. Side to side. Um. My energetic body is just so alive inside. I'm starting to go in a meditative state, actually. All right. I'll do another one. Another side stretch after each of those crossing legs. Go ahead and reverse. Do the other one. All right. Sit down. And dasana. Yeah. We can open first, yeah. do a supta konasana before you do your supta kandasana. Good. External, external, but draw the thigh inward, inward, inward. Oh, see? <laughs> My legs are. Yeah. The slippery already. All right. Steady. And a bit of a side to side. All right. And stay a moment. Beautiful. All right. Free your bind. Free the legs. Rocking up and down. Good. And the side to side them. So you might be wondering. How frequent do I do this sequence? Uh, to be honest, I do them almost every day. That's why I'm so used to them. This is not just a once a week practice. There was a time in my practice, the past, that I was practicing this deep elements daily. And each element, or many repetitions. Yeah, because that's me. That's my nature. I wanted to understand the deep essence of the techniques. So I just don't do them. I understand where it's coming from, both the physical anatomy and the energetic anatomy. And of course, yeah, the resilience of the mind. But, and then even if I'm used to them already, right. I still do them today. Yeah. Uh, if I'm busy, I would do every alternate days, but I practice still every day. Yeah. And then practice the other ones. Yeah. Pranayama is every day too. All right. We're back here. Mm -hmm. But this time, we're going to fold over our hips, okay? Yeah, inhale. 
you can just keep it upright or folding over your abs. Just make sure there's no clogging in the way. It's a forward bend. Yeah. We're on our finishing practice already. So deepening your practice requires planning amidst our jobs, respons responsibilities at home, and social to ourselves. So entail sacrifices. Yeah. If we can spend 30 minutes browsing on our phones, yeah, give that up. And then a lot that precious, yeah. <laughs> Time for your practice if it's your calling. Okay, and tangle. Yeah. And after the Bada Padmasana, I would do Upavishta Kunasana and allow the head to relax. As a finishing practice, I would do forward dance. And sometimes, you know, reclining, twisting and up. Okay. Rubbing the hips. And the culmination of my practice is actually the Kandasana. Yep. And the Kandasana. The inner, the outer edges of the feet are resting between the two bottom ribs near the hollow spot there. Yeah, the deep indentation, like the perfectly matched. And like you can <laughs> lean against your feet. In a meditative position. And breathing through it. Beautiful. All right. Inhale, lift up to the front, away from the stretch. You may give your legs some nice shaking in front there. And a gentle massage. And lie down on your back. And a few circles and a bit of a side to side. And rubbing. Good. And then flipping over to our Viparita Karani, our mudra. I've given the tutorial of this technique. You may just want to have a look. And there, uh, you can either gaze between your eyebrows or with your eyes closed, lifting your eyelids up. And breathe. Or maybe an halasana there. I would do a halasana sometimes. And then do that extended arm. I can open the rest of my spine. And stay maybe a couple more breaths here. Reconnecting to the breath. Pull the core in. And there's a deep flexion after the deep back pits. All right. And slowly return with control. Okay. Bending. And a bit of a side to side. In circles. Oh, feels good, that one. All right. 
when you're sitting, when you're flowing, maybe. Right, I'm curling up and pressing down. Right, I'm watching. All right, one more set. Crossing one leg at a time. Going through your set. But up at Masana. Oh, yeah. We're folding over the legs again. So just switching legs. Yeah? But, but up at Masana, especially in the fold, you are actually gaining access to either side of your nadis. Yeah. You know, working those hips. Circle around those hips. And the shoulders before you fold in the middle. Make sure, yeah, you're not pressing against the bones of your ribs. And give your shoulders some nice rubbing too. It's a huge practice, eh? All right. You know. And exhale. So I'm trying to run through the techniques fast already, but normally I would hold longer. Yeah, because we might run out of the recording time again. Okay. One cross. Yeah. And B. Kurmasana. Or the turtle. Right, and tangle. Three. You can rub the hips. And one more, and that's it. Inward, you have to hug those thigh bones in. Even your legs are external, exter or turning externally, you need to draw them inwards. Sometimes I do normally, and I just sometimes I do the catch the mudra inside. And then we'll hold the retention. Exhale out. All right. You can flow the arms. You can do an Anjali behind you. Beautiful. Yeah. Entangle, releasing. Yeah. With the front, you can just lie down. Uh, rocking up and down there. And a few circles. If it feels good doing a back bend or a side stretch, do that. Slightly kick that leg up. And the other one. Beautiful. Good. And last is again another round of Bipa Rita Karani Mudra.
Alasan. And some <laughs> like shaking there. Sometimes I will cycle here. No. Again, it's just me. Just to free whatever plugging the stand to show this. Already, uh, the body is balanced again. Okay, you can do straight legs and then bending your knees and circle around. Well done, you. Or well done, us. <laughs> okay, I feel like doing another side stretch here. So I can rub this hip. All right, up and down. And so swing. Yep. Rubbing one side. Bring the lower spine, maybe vibrating. The other one. Beautiful. Right. And upwards, hang a moment. And upwards and downwards facing. All right, I'll finish. If I still <laughs> able to sustain it, just one. Well, jump up to stand all the way to the top. All right, coming down and <laughs> floor. <laughs> you sit. There we are. Yeah. Finish. Purely asana practice. Yeah, but definitely if you're working on those deep inner pockets in your physical body, you're freeing the energy. Then you can, yeah, rest in the shavasana. Yep. Or you can carry on with your pranayama technique and then finish with your relaxation if you have the time. But this is a good one, strong one, actually. So let's finish. Inhale. And exhale. Again, this yeah, practice is not meant to be done by a beginner, even... If you've had extensive yoga experience already, each element requires initiation. I would just like to share with you how I do my personal practice. And I've done many years of preparation. So if you need advice and assistance and how you can deepen yours, yeah. I'd be happy to assist you. All right. One more. Inhale. Unseal to the chest. Let it go. Pulse over the heart. Namaste. Thank you for watching, joining, and hopefully, yeah, I'm able to yeah, teach you yeah, and inspire. Bye.